This is Shauna's workshop and I'm giving you an overview of my industrial control systems home lab. I want to give special thanks to Ashley Van Housen. She was the one that did the anti-siphon um, training of intro to industrial control systems where I got this lab from and I've been working on it ever since. It's just been an amazing lab and I'm so happy that I took that class with her. So this is the layout that I did uh, for my lab. It's a little different than the one that she gave to us. She gave to us um, a way to do it completely within VirtualBox if that works for you, but I found that factory IO is very graphic intensive and it needs a lot of RAM and it just didn't work very well in the virtual machine. So instead, what I have here is I have the gray area right there are the machines that are inside the virtual box um, adapter. And you'll see that there's actually two um, um, ethernet connections. There's one connection, NAT connection, that's to my home router. And my Windows 11 desktop is connected to that home router. And then there's also the VirtualBox host only adapter that is controlled by the PFSense firewall. And that is going to be connecting to the workstation that's running Ubuntu 20.04 and the PLC and that is running Open PLC Runtime and the SCADA machine that is running SCADA BR and then our attack machine that's running Parrot Linux. So this is the basic network diagram of the um, lab that we're going to be working with and I'm going to be doing some videos on running Nmap scans of this network, basic reconnaissance for cybersecurity, and I'm going to be running some Wireshark packet analysis as well. That'll be in another upcoming video, but this video right now is just to show you what it's like when it's all up and running so that you can know that you have yours installed correctly. So let's get started. Okay, so let's show you how to get this thing up and running. First things first, let's look over some of the settings. PFSense for the firewall, you need to go to the settings and you need to go to the network section and you need to make sure that adapter one is set to NAT and that adapter two is set to the host only adapter that is the virtual box host only ethernet adapter. And then we'll go to the workstation and again, you need to go to settings and you need to go to the network settings. This one's only going to be using adapter number one, and it's going to be set to the host only adapter, VirtualBox host only Ethernet adapter. And now we need to go to the PLC, and it's going to be very similar. Go to network settings, only adapter number one, host only adapter. Then we'll go to the SCADA one, and it's going to be the same. Network settings, adapter one, host only. And then the attack box, I actually have this one having internet access as well, but that is up to you. I have this one on network settings. It's adapter one to NAT and adapter two to host only adapter. So those are the network settings that you need to have them all be on the same network so that they can communicate with one another. So I'm just gonna go and get these started up right now and then I'll be back to show you um, what the setup is like. Okay, so I have all of my virtual machines up and running. This one down here, Factory I.O., I tested this lab out with using a virtual machine of Windows running Factory I.O. instead, but the Factory I.O. program is so graphic intensive, I found that it was very difficult for it to run correctly, so I instead have installed Factory I.O. on the actual Windows machine that is running the same virtual box. So we'll just start from the top. One thing that's very important, it's very important to have uh, the firewall up and running first. It's gonna act as sort of the DHCP server and assign IP addresses to all of the virtual machines on the home network. So it's very important that it is up and running first. So you can see once it's up and running, you're gonna get this interface here. It's gonna show you its IP address of its LAN connection and the IP address of its uh, WAN connection. So once that is up and running, you can just sort of put it in the background for right now. There's some things that we can do with it to assign static IPs and allow uh, packet captures, but I'll leave that for a future video on running more um, specific labs for here. And so then the next machine that we have running is our workstation on Ubuntu. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. And then the other machine is the PLC. 
and it might not it might be hard to see that there's actually open PLC on this um, we don't really do too much on this end this is just um, running the open PLC runtime script that will act as the PLC that's going to be interfacing with the factory IO program so I'm just going to minimize that and the other machine that we have up and running is SCADA BR so once it's up and running it shows you its IP address up here at the top and uh, the dash how to get to the dashboard both the PLC and SCADA BR are accessed by a dashboard that we access on the workstation and so then the other machine that we have up and running is the attack box that is running um, Linux Parrot. And so this is what I'll be using to run my Nmap scan scans and other cybersecurity tools against this home network, ICS network. So now that this up and running, we want to get the factory IO working. So again, I have factory IO installed on my um, on my Windows 10 machine. If I go over here into scenes, I can go to, you can use pre-made scenes that have already been made for you, and you could make your own scripts in open PLC if you understand ladder logic. Um, I will be doing a later video that's showing the actual program, uh, programming of the PLC, how to build things in ladder logic, but right now this is just an overview of the lab showing you how it works. So in my scenes, I have the scene right here that we're going to be working with. It's a basic um, boxes load on to this assembly line right here and it goes down and then when it trips this sensor, this is a two axis pick in place that will reach down, grab the box and it'll move over and put the box down here on this pallet. So that's all how it's going to be working. So now I need to get the workstation up and running so that we can control the PLC. So I'm going to go back to my workstation. And again, um, OpenPLC and SCADA BR are both um, controlled by a browser dashboard. So I'm just going to be going to my browser right now. And I'm going to be going to OpenPLC. I've saved a favorite place of the actual IP address and then port 8080 slash login. There's some things while that's getting loading, I'll show you the settings that we have here in factory IO. In factory IO, you wanna to go to your driver section and this is where you would actually bring the inputs and the outputs onto the PLC um, to connect it with your ladder logic. So this is the start button, this is a safety door, this is the sensor, and then these are the, that it's basically detecting the different uh, places of the boxes. And these are the outputs, the coil to the belt conveyor to get it moving. And then this is the pick in place, it rotating on its axis, going down to grab the box, rotating uh, counterclockwise, and then rotating clockwise to move it off onto the pallet. Once you have this in place, you want to make sure you go to configuration and the Modbus server settings right here. You want the IP to be the IP address of the machine that is running factory IO. You want it to be the port 502. Um, slave ID, you could pick any ID that you want. This is for situations where you might have multiple uh, PLCs running in multiple different scenes. Um, so you can choose the slave ID that you want and then you want to make sure that you choose the correct network adapter. So because this is on my home computer, I have several different uh, network adapters on here and so I want to choose the one for the VirtualBox host only Ethernet adapter to make sure that I'm able to communicate to the PLC that's on that VirtualBox um, network that's controlled by the PFSense firewall. So here we're at the dashboard. I'm just going to sign in. And once you're signed in, you want to go to programs and you're going to want to choose your program. I'm going to be running off of this one right here. And you want to launch the program so it compiles it into the machine. So this is compiling the PLC with the program. So again, even though I am on the workstation, which is the dot 15 device on my network, we are actually at the dashboard for the dot four PLC and it is compiling this program into that machine. So now that I am uh, have it compiled in there, we want to take a look at slave devices 
and this is all of our inputs and outputs and what it's going to control. You want to make sure that it's set to the Modbus TCP device. You want to have the slave ID the same. You want to have the IP address be the same as the slave in factory IO right there. And again, you want to have the port to port 502. So I'm just going to go back to the uh, dashboard. So now that I'm back at my dashboard, let's get this factory started and coming alive. Go down to Start PLC, and it's going to start the runtime log. And once it's listening on that port, we could go over here and push play on the factory, and we will see it come alive. As the box moves down, it's going to reach down and pick it up and move it over to that pallet. And as that's running, we can go over here to the monitoring tab and you'll see all the different uh, inputs and outputs turning green and, and red, true and false as the conditions de demand it in the factory. And just to show you that this is communicating with each other, I want to go over here to the factory and I'm going to open the safety door and it should make the factory line stop. And so you see that it brings it to a stop. If we come over here onto the monitoring tab, again, this is on the workstation. And so it says the safety door is false because it's open. And so it cannot run. So if we go back and we close the door, let's see what happens. Come on. And it kind of glitches it and you have to start over from there. But that's just to show you that the two are communicating. So now that we know that they're communicating, we can actually run some cybersecurity scans. I'm going to be doing an Nmap scan, and we're going to be working with some Wireshark doing some packet analysis as well of communication from the factory to the PLC. So that'll come up into the next portion.